Hello there, right here in today's video, we're gonna look at everything that you should do before you update to 1.18. This includes collecting rares as well as taking advantage of things before it becomes harder. The first one we're going to take a look at is the Big Drip Leaf. In 1.17, you can place this plant on whatever type of block you want to, as long as it has a full square top surface. In 1.18, this all changes, so now you can only place it on these type of blocks, and any other type of block is just not possible. That means if you went ahead and placed down some Drip Leaf on top of any other type of block prior to updating to 1.18, you just got yourself a new type of rare block, and you're still able to use the old Drip Leaf as well as waterlog it, as long as you don't update the bottom block. So this is an easy rare to get. Let's take a look at the next one. The next one is fairly easy to get. That is getting these special budded amethyst blocks above wide level 40. That's because geodes in 1.17 can form anywhere between wide level 70 all the way down to the bottom of the world. That's because in 1.18 they change it so that amethyst will only spawn from bottom of the world up to wide level 30. So there's now 40 blocks where they used to spawn but no longer. Now they added this change in to prevent players from easily finding geodes just by flying over top of oceans. Although if you do fly over top of a deep ocean with night vision on you can still find the very tops of some of these that's because the bottom of it spawns at wide level 30 but then it takes about 10 blocks to fit it in so it can go up into the wide level 40 so when you're 1.17 make sure to find one that at least starts at wide level 40 or above then when you upgrade it, these bud locations will be considered a rare block as they cannot be picked up or moved so wherever the game places them that's where they'll stay this is especially cool to show your friends if you can get the geo to kind of pop out of the ground the next one's also fairly easy to do. This is having a boat placed inside of a immovable block, such as having this boat being placed inside of this bedrock. This is because in 1.17, the area where the boat checks for collision is actually smaller than the boat size, allowing you to place it inside of a wall or even inside of the floor. And this has changed in 1.18, so now the boat will only be placed down if it doesn't collide with any blocks. Now 1.18, you're still able to place blocks inside of boats by pushing them in, and you can get some immovable blocks placed inside of them by doing tricks such as this where you can get obsidian inside of an entity but this fix also has some benefits like preventing players from accidentally placing boats inside of walls when stacking boats for any of my wither cages the next rare block is a bit harder to find that is these type of blocks which are actually grass blocks that think they have a snow layer on top of them just like this one here but they actually don't have a snow layer and instead it turns out that they look really strange like this where they have the normal white side but they have this weird gray top now they have tried fixing this in the past so finding one of these would be difficult so you probably need a third party program that search around these surface lakes inside of snowy biomes this next rare is a bit harder to find that is having different floating vegetation over top of these water lakes. That is because in 1 to 18, they fix this. Now one of my favorites is finding a three high grass plant or by just finding some flowers floating in the center. The next one has to do with bedrock. Here in 1.17, we have bedrock from wide level 0 to 4. But in 1.18, all that bedrock is converted over into deep slate and the new deeper worlds are placed underneath. But it's actually still possible to keep your old bedrock at this wide level. Now to have it kept, you'd have to first do some special stuff in 1.17. And that is remove all of the Y0 bedrock at the very bottom of the world here for an entire chunk. So if you do F3 plus G, the chunk border is going to pop up. And as I stand in this one, you can see the outline, which is a 16 by 16 area and every single bedrock that was at this level has to be removed and if you do that and then you update to 1 to 18 you will get all the old bedrock to stay there or whatever you have left now if you're wondering how you can break this bedrock at y level zero you probably will have to break some bedrock above it in order to reach it depending on what type of bedrock breaking method you go for i got an entire playlist going over all the different types of bedrock breaking depending on what version your world is in and i'll link that in the description so you can break bedrock in survival this will allow you to save any type of bedrock wither cages that you have here or other bedrock goodies like bedrock vaults, tunnels, prisons, or traps. Otherwise, it will get converted, potentially letting your withers loose. Now, if you're wondering what happens if you leave just a single block of bedrock, it will actually convert it as well as everything above it, and it will also place blocks underneath a wide level zero bedrock. But if you remove any bedrock at wide level zero, it's going to not place in any blocks underneath. That means the bottom hole on Hermitcraft, where they broke wide level zero, will not have any blocks or bedrock below it. So it will continue to be a hole down into the void, with the new bedrock being placed at wide level negative 64. So this rare is much harder to pull off in survival. But if done properly, you could have old bedrock or even save yourself from having to break the new bedrock. If you're wondering what happens to the bedrock in a super flat world when you update, it's left alone and there is no new caves placed underneath. Even though this area is empty and you could potentially build underneath here now. Next, we're taking a look at things that you cannot keep for 1.18, but you might want to take advantage of while you're still in 1.17. So make sure you're subscribed, as I'm always discovering new things and sharing them here. The first one being that you can x-ray through the ground in survival by pushing blocks on top of you while you're standing inside of a composter or a cauldron. 
go ahead and flip this lever you can see that i'm able to see through the ground and see some caves in the area now since like version 1.8 they really reduced the amount of caves you can actually see when you're in survival compared to if you're in spectator but depending on where you put this composter you can use this to find caves that you need to light up in order to have your mob farm be more efficient or maybe you're just looking for some geodes now performing this in 1.18 will just let you see the inside of the composter the next one is also fairly simple and that is you could just do this little trick where you can have the dripstone fall and then all of a sudden get stuck back to the block again. There's not that much redstone to this but the actual uses for this aren't that interesting for survival. You don't take damage underneath of it or anything like that. And in 1.18 they changed dripstone so this doesn't work. Another easy thing that gets a bit harder is my easy wither killer using dripstone. It becomes a little bit more difficult in 1.18 but I found a fix by using a hopper and some lava. I covered all those details in this video here which I'll link down below and you can check out at the end of the video. Next is the change that they did with how mobs spawn among light levels. Now in 1.17 you could get zombies to spawn in light levels of 7 meaning like this corner over here could produce a zombie even though you have a torch in the center. But in 1.18 this has changed so they will need a light level of 0. So even if I go all the way over to this corner right here, this is still a light level of 5 from that torch. So nothing would be able to spawn. That means every torch that you place down can stop as much as 450 spawning spaces around it. This change affects a few different things including hostile mobs being able to spawn inside of dark forest. Right where I'm standing here is a light level 7. That means in the past, zombies and other mobs could spawn there. But with this new change, you pretty much will never find any hostile mobs during the daytime on the surface here or even close to cave openings. But at night, mobs are not affected by the skylight and are instead only affected by block light. So we'll still get hostile mobs spawning at night. So you will still need to light up your places. Now this doesn't affect all hostile mobs, but only mobs that needed a light level of 7 or lower in order to spawn. So this includes like zombies, skeletons, creepers, as well as like spiders and witches. Now mobs like Endermen can be found in all three dimensions, and this also affects them. Now even though drowns could spawn with light level of 7 or lower in 1.17, it seems like they weren't changed here in 1.18, as they're still able to spawn in the lower light levels down here. Slimes are unique where they can spawn on the surface in swamps, but they need a light level of 0, or they can spawn underneath a Y level 40 with any light level, no matter how bright it is. Now in another dimension, most mobs are able to spawn in higher light levels. So in this dimension, it only affects wither skeletons, skeletons, and endermen. So like in my wither skeleton farm here, I just make sure there's no light sources too close to the spawning platform because it needs to be zero. Now this isn't going to affect most mob farms as we put in roof over top of them to make sure the light level is always zero. That's because they just spawn in faster than if it's any other number. Alternatively, we just have the farm completely encased. So no matter if there's any light around it, it won't get inside. Now this would affect my nether portal mob farms such as you wouldn't get skeletons spawning inside of my fortress farm or any hostile mobs to spawn in my nether portal general mob farm. But this doesn't affect my slime nether portal mob farm. Now there's a downside to having deeper worlds and that is now that we have all these blocks down here when the game attempts to spawn in some mobs at the surface it's going to be much slower now. Although they did experiment with a new type of mob spawning where mobs spawn at the same speed no matter if they are placed at the bottom of the world or at the top of the world. They ultimately removed this from the game and went back to the old method where the mobs start spawning at the bottom of the world and move upwards meaning that the lower your farms are the quicker hostile mobs will fill up inside them. This will also affect my squid farms as well as fish mob farms and will affect my glow squid farm as well as my axolotl. Glow squid farms also got nerfed because they only work at Y level 30 or below. So you can't just place them near the surface and AFK really high in the world. Axolotls will also change so that they only spawn in lush caves and they need to have clay within 5 blocks underneath of them if they're going to spawn. So you need to place this farm in a lush caves that comes up to the surface in order to make it easy for yourself so you don't have to do much spawn proofing. Now because the deeper and higher worlds only applies to the overworld dimension, all my nether farms like my wither skull farm, pigment bartering xp farm, fortress farm, gas farm, magma cube, hoglin, skeleton won't be affected by these changes so it does make it worthwhile to build those farms instead of the overworld versions of them. The end dimension also doesn't have its height change so enderman xp farms will keep their speed. So this change will only make farms that you typically build at sea level slower such as like my copper farm or a general mob farm. So I'm here at my simple witch farm and we're going to go ahead and run it to see how it compares between the versions. Farm running for 1 hour in 1.17 and on the right side is in 1.18. So in 1.18, you will only get about 60% of the rates you got in 1.17, which is a massive decrease. Now in 1.18, they removed a whole bunch of different types of biomes. For example, I'm standing here in a snowy mountains biome, which is just a mountain version of the snowy tundra. But in 1.18, they removed all the names for mountain and hill variations. But instead, the height of the biome is not determined by the biome, but is determined by the terrain stat of the area. 
so it's not possible to obtain the old biome names in your world as the names will just change with the new names for them like extreme hills or mountains is now called windswept hills but any terrain that you load in 1.17 will stay that way now when you do upgrade your world, it's going to try to keep the biomes the same going all the way down into the new areas underneath the Y level 0. The rivers will continue all the way down to the bottom of the world, and if this was a slime chunk, it would start at Y level 40 and go all the way down to the negative 64. But there is a couple exceptions. Let's say you have a desert biome here, and you go ahead and you upgrade your world and it adds in all these new deep slate chunks underneath. Let's say you used to have a farm at the bottom of the world, but now that they increase the world depth, you decide that you want to bring your farm down and place it at the very bottom. But with these new chunks down here, we can actually get new types of biomes being the dripstone as well as the lush caves. So even though it was a desert above, if we go into one of these places, it's actually a lush cave biome, which could actually break your farm if you try to bring it down, such as husk don't spawn inside that biome. Now this also could be used as a positive. You could have a perimeter that's already dug out and when you upgrade it, you get all these new blocks, but you also end up getting some lush caves underneath of it, which means you could easily come in with a tropical fish farm or an axolotl farm. Or if it's a dripstone biome down here, you could come in and build in a fast copper farm. Also keep in mind, if you live like in a mushroom biome, even underneath of it, it could switch out to being a biome like a lush caves where hostile mobs can actually spawn, where they wouldn't spawn if it was a mushroom filled. Now the new simulation distance has some interesting effects, but I'll cover most of them in a different video. But one thing I do want to explain to you guys is that even though you have entities or mobs that are typically unloaded chunks, that black square over there, if we go ahead and put ourselves out further away, despite us choosing to not have that area actually simulated, if we choose to have it just rendered, the game is still seeing those entities out there as entities are counting to the mob cap. So if you crank up your render distance and lower your sim distance, you can still have mobs out in the distance that are preventing mobs from spawning inside of your farm. Something to keep in mind if you're on a server. Another thing related to mob spawning that they changed is that each player will kind of have their own mob cap around them, and other players in the world cannot actually help or hinder at spawning mobs near the player. So in the past one player could be afking at this farm and then some person could just be afking out in the distance high up so nothing else can spawn around it and this person was actually helping that person over there get more mobs in the farm because the game used to say well i can't place any mobs around this guy so i'm guessing i'm going to just place more around that guy this has completely changed in 1 to 18 so it doesn't matter if there's other people like in the nether loading underneath while you're afking in your pigman gold farm you will still get mobs to spawn inside of it so for most players this is actually a good thing Next, I'm going to talk about finding rare ores. In the past, these three ores were really difficult to get in large amounts because they'd only appear in deep slate as well as tough blobs. And these blobs only occurred at the very bottom of the world. And there just wasn't very many of these ores at the bottom of the world, especially not the new copper. But in 1.18, we have a lot of deep slate, meaning that we can get a lot of deep slate ores. But there's still a slight problem where the ores of copper, coal, and emerald hardly reach down into the new deep slate area. So these guys can be a bit rare to find, but it is a lot easier than finding them in one dot. 17. So I went ahead and just searched for some deep slate emerald and I found one right here. These being quite rare because emerald only occurs in mountain variations. Then I searched for deep slate copper in a 50 by 50 area and I found quite a few. Everything you see here that's a beacon was actually that and because they come in blobs it does add up. Now the same thing applies to coal. I went over here and searched a 50 by 50 area and all the beacons you see showing up were blobs of deep slate variations of coal. So it may be tedious to get this in large amounts but definitely not as hard as in 1.17. Leave a like and check out this playlist to learn about all the different cool types of rares you can collect. Or this one going over cool tricks and tips for your Minecraft world. Thank you everyone so much for subscribing as we reach 325,000 subs. If you'd ever like to support me, I do have a Patreon page where I give out personal rewards. Thank you all for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!